Hello, and thank you all for watching, whoever's watching. I would like to start the video out by saying I'm probably going to mispronounce quite a few names and words, and I do apologize. No, no offense intended. I just really have been working on my Spanish and my pronunciations, and I'm still working on it. And this video will be broken up in two. I'm going to talk for a couple minutes here, and then I'm going to stop and show the video footage of the day La Katrina was actually shot and unavoidably passed away shortly after. But let me go ahead and start the first part. So in this video, I wanted to do kind of a quick remembrance of about the year anniversary of her death. Some people call it a murder. I've heard it called an assassination. Whatever you call it, it did result in her death. And it has been about a year since that event occurred. Um, Maria Guadalupe Lopez Esquivel, also known as in her later life, La Katrina Dame of Death, and also, I'm sorry, it was another name they had for her. I had it written down. I completely lost the name. I, I forgot, but I'll see it somewhere in my notes. But um, again, this is the year kind of remembrance of her death and not much is known about her history growing up. When she died, she was only 21 years old, but she made a very big, for lack of better words, impact during her time here. I made a video a year ago talking about her and it received a lot of views, a lot of people enjoyed the video, but I ultimately ended up erasing it because I do that sometimes. I get videos, get a lot of views, I get uncomfortable with it, and I erase it. So I try not to do that now. Um, Lorena was one of the head cartel members of the, I don't know if it's Jalisco, Jalisco, Jalisco Nueva Generacion. Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion. She ended up joining about 2017 and then leading up uh, until her ultimate death in January-ish, January 14, 15, 13 of 2020. It is believed that she joined the cartel uh, because of her boyfriend, Miguel Fernandez, known as M2. He was a very high-ranking person in the cartel, and she got with him, joined the cartel, and became high ranking herself. She was in charge of, I believe my research, paying cartels off, um, paying ransoms, lots of murders, just she did a lot in the area of the cartels in her short time on this earth. And right now, I'll go ahead and pause and then you'll see just the video footage of the events from the day of her death. Tranquila, mija, ya viene el helicóptero por ti. Ya viene el helicóptero. Tranquila, hija, tranquila. Vas a estar bien. Trata de aguantar, eh.
Okay, so you all just saw the footage of her last day and her holding her neck and being taken off and arrested. And while she was arrested and being taken off in a helicopter to an ambulance, she did end up dying a few minutes after that. And one thing I did notice a difference, when you look at the American version, like the English version of what happened, they say that the cop found her and uh, he says, calm down, kid, da 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 um, it's going to be okay. But in the Spanish version, the police officer is actually saying, calm down, mija, which I know means baby. The officer didn't say, calm down, kid. He said, calm down, baby, like, like she, she was a very young girl. She was 21 years old. She was a kid. Um, I think, and that kind of leads me to believe that that officer, even though she, you know, they were on opposite sides of the law. He had sympathy for this young lady as she was dying. Even though he was there to arrest her. Even though, you know, the intent I'm sure wasn't to kill her or to lead to her death. But that is what happened. And he was able to, I believe, have sympathy for her leading up to the moments before her death. And in that um, same arrest... Her boyfriend, Miguel Fernandez, M2, was also arrested and six other cartel members. And so far, the information, as I'm learning more about the cartels and everything, especially cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion, um, this is a cartel that used to be run by El Chapo. And if you look at one of my other videos, I talk about El Chapo wanting a new trial and trying to get out of his life sentence because the lawyer was incompetent. But once El Chapo got arrested... Um, it's some more information. I did a video about his son too, but I've erased that. I'm, I won't do that again. But since he has been dethroned, you know, now spending his life in prison, these are the new cartel members that are going up. And then over my research, I also found out that cartels run operations all over the New Americas, meaning South America, all the South, so many South American countries, Asia, Europe, all over the world. Um... I, on a side note, I notice that people are always afraid of the cartels coming into the United States and protecting the borders. Um, the cartels are here. They're already in the United States. Someone who's a member of a cartel lives down the street from you. The cartel was just being run in Dallas. I just did a story six months ago of a cartel where, uh, by where my mom, who is unfortunately deceased now, but her home right down the street off Lake June is where a whole cartel operation was running out, out of a boot store. So it's here. It's in Dallas. And then later on, my story with uh, El Paso, that's here. That's in Texas. It's here. It's already here. There is no border protecting from that. It's here. I don't think in Texas it's going to ever get as violent. I don't think it'll be as much death as in Mexico, but it is here and it's already happening. But yeah, that was uh, kind of interesting to find out that the cartels do essentially operate all over the planet. Or this particular cartel, New Jalisco cartel, operates all over the planet, pretty much. And they're one of the most prominent cartels in the world. And I read something that says, the New Jalisco cartel operates in 75% of Mexican states. So I'm embarrassed to say I didn't always know this. I didn't know Mexico was separated in states. I just thought those were cities. Blah, they're states. But 75%, that one cartel, that's 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 a lot. That that's pretty um that's pretty high numbers. And mostly, you know, the Jalisco cartel, and this is a known thing, so I'm not saying anything that no one doesn't know, but they operate and they traffic cocaine, methamphetamine, fentanyl, fentanyl, fentanyl. Fentanyl laced heroin. So 75% of the states in Mexico, operations all over the world, trafficking some of the biggest drugs ever, or the, 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 the most popular drugs. I don't do drugs, so I don't endorse or not endorse that. It's just not my thing. But wow, that's a lot of power for one cartel to have. But yes, it's been about a year since since she died, and she was very popular. And she was very proud of her lifestyle and she flaunted her lifestyle. And that actually probably is what ultimately led her at the young age of 21 to be apprehended so quickly from flaunting the lifestyle. I, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll never know because she's gone now and we'll 
never know, you know. There's a, but that's a very young age to um, to to pass away. There's no real knowledge, again, like I said, of her upbringing. So far from what I've reached, sir, sir, there's not a lot known or what made her decide to go in this direction. Her father was a farmer. Her mom was a homemaker. There, you know, there was nothing, no indicator of what made her, when she met this young man, decide, well, I'm, I want to be a cartel member. But when she became a member of that cartel, she shot straight up. And then she, she found her calling, I suppose. But um, that's it. Um, I, you know, we all make decisions in life. And life is, a, um, we all make our decisions. And we have to live with our decisions. Whether there's a, it's a decision to go to school for training, to be a police officer, a nurse, a teacher, you know, the typical careers. Whether it's to be a re go to trade school to be a receptionist. Whether it's des deciding to become a cartel drug trafficker. We all make our life choices and things happen as a result of those choices. So we have to live with those things. But, um... I hope her family is, I do hope, I will say this, I hope her family is, is doing well mentally, regardless of a decision that your child makes, um, that's still your child, and I hope that they're, they've adjusted okay in the years since her death, that's, that's heartbreaking, a child dying is heartbreaking, no matter what, so that's it, and I just wanted one to kind of revisit it, um, I may dig into this and start kind of going into her history more and trying to find find out more about her actual life leading up to this because it's really interesting i don't know it's interesting that um that's that's the career path she chose and then it was cut so short especially since especially since she was so good at it you know so but you know these things happen but um that's it till the next video involving what happened in el paso the day before yesterday bye